It would without a doubt be a massive lie if I claimed to be the first YouTuber to review a weird Christian game. Brutal Moose has done it, Cat Icarus has done it, Peanut Butter Game has done it, heck, the Angry Video Game Nerd's been doing it for over 10 years. It's nothing new if you're sardonically reviewing a Christian game, so you may be wondering why am I, a small time YouTuber looking for his break, doing just that? Well, here's the thing. I believe I might have found possibly one of, if not the single, weirdest Christian themed game ever created. In all honesty, I'm surprised that there's so little coverage of this game on YouTube as a whole. It's called Uriel's Chasm, and it's an indie title released on Steam in 2014 by a very strange man named Dylan Barry, also known as Rails Slave. And under that name, he's published weird experimental rock songs on Bandcamp and an entire series of equally weird games, such as NPPD Rush the Milk of Ultraviolet, Selfie Sisters of the Amniotic Lens, and of course Uriel's Chasm, which was actually his second commercial release, NPPD Rush being the first. To be honest, this game nearly made the list for my first Flash Reviews episode, but then during research, for that episode, I decided to dig a little deeper. And I regret it so, so much. So I hope your butt is ready for this, because we're about to dive into the deep, dark, and disturbingly Christian rabbit hole that is Uriel's Chasm. The whole idea behind the game is that Uriel's Chasm is supposed to be a Christian shovelware game released sometime in the 90s. The game opens with this extremely grainy FMV sequence of these two girls calling themselves the shovelware queens about to play the game. So we found this old game, um, we vaguely remember buying it in the 90s. It sucked. Okay, pause there. Way to put off your players right there. No less than 20 seconds into the game, you're saying that it sucks. I can't help but feel that that's not really something you want to be saying about your game, let alone in the game itself. I'm reminded somewhat of Earthbound's slightly misguided ad campaign. I mean, nobody wanted to buy a game with the tagline, this game stinks, so why would anyone want to buy a game which claims it sucks? But anyway, the shovelware queens then behave like a couple of amateur vloggers for a few more seconds before the game itself starts up. Or at least a loading screen for it starts. A loading screen with really 80s music and this quote from the Book of Hebrews on it, which I didn't bother to read and doesn't seem to have much to do with anything, I'll be brutally honest. Then, after you finally get to the title screen, the story begins. And lo, for it maketh no Same sense. Dream every night. I'm falling. Feel the very essence of my dreams. Get on with it! If you couldn't tell from looking at it, this unskippable cutscene consists mostly of this space nun rambling about religious weirdness. Very slowly. And in a really weird, emotionless robot voice. I suppose it might vaguely have something to do with what's on the screen, but other than that, it doesn't really seem to explain much, thus completely defeating the purpose of exposition. Though eventually, Space Nun does get to the point and manage to churn out at least some coherent story. I have been sent to the outer fringes of the galaxy on a rescue mission. I'm here to investigate the disappearance of the great orbital monastery, Enoch's Hope. After that load of nonsense, the gameplay begins, whereupon your aim is to fly around in a spaceship shooting asteroids to collect pages of the Bible which increase your faith meter? Because apparently Bible pages contain pure faith which can be mined as a resource? Does it have any physical effect other than being a number? Why do we need to have more than the garden? What the hell even is the garden? Also, why are we flying around collecting pages? Why not just print more Bibles? More importantly, how is what we're doing here in any way related to what we just heard Space Nun expositioning about? But anyway, back to the gameplay. You have limited ammo and equally limited fuel, and if you run out of fuel or faith, then you start again from the beginning. Not that there's much of a tutorial to tell you any of this, the game just sort of drops you in, gives you an intrusive block of text at the bottom of the screen and hopes you pick it all up. One thing I've just noticed, if I may digress again, going by the style Rail Slave is adopting in this game, it seems to me like he's trying to emulate more sort of early 90s DOS shovelware games when Windows 95 wasn't quite a thing yet. And if that's what he's going for, I don't think Uriel's Chasm is doing a very good job, and not in the way one may expect. 
The sprite art is pretty good, but that's the problem. Overall, to me, it just looks too good to feasibly pass as a 90s DOS shovelware game. Now, I don't know much about the 90s gaming scene, let alone the 90s shovelware scene, and for all I know, I might be talking utter rubbish, but I don't think that an actual DOS shovelware game from the 90s would look this colourful or play this smoothly. I mean, look at Duke Nukem 2 on the side here. That came out in 1993, and that's nowhere near as colourful or smooth as this. That's not to suggest anything about the actual quality of the game, though. It's kind of repetitive, and the fuel and ammo limits make it overly difficult and irritating to manage, not to mention that there's this thing flying around which rapidly drains your faith if you fly into it. Is this supposed to be the garden? If so, it's a bloody weird-looking garden. I don't know about you, but generally gardens don't have teeth. Or pipes and are generally green and full of plants and grass and flowers and things, and are not creepy detached mutant sentient propellers in space. That said, I've played far worse games than this, and this is probably the best part of the game, all things considered. I will also admit that the music in this level is okay. It does the job, it's nice and atmospheric, and it fits the setting really well. But anyway, once you gain enough faith to overtake the garden's faith count, the music pauses for a few seconds, and you get another cutscene. I can see a way through into the garden. I'll have to hitch a ride on this canister along the spine of the chasm. Once again, only that one line is worth listening to, since the rest is another load of religious guff courtesy of Space Nun. Following that is level 2, and OH THOR'S HAMMER OBNOXIOUS MUSIC TURN IT OFF! Thank you, that's much better. This level is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up, and a really quite difficult one at that. The sprites are pretty large, and it's not entirely clear where your hitbox is and what can and can't do damage. On occasion, I seem to take damage solely from touching the bottom of the stage. You can only shoot straight forward, whereas your enemies surround you from all directions and fire lots and lots of bullets at you. At times, they can even come up behind you where you can't hit them and attack you from there. One bullet takes off half of your heart's total at the bottom, and in what can only be described as a video gaming cardinal sin, pun half intended, there are no invincibility frames. So if you get caught in a storm of bullets, then you are S-C-R-E-W-E-D with a capital everything. Worse, there are no lives, you just get sent right back to the start if you're killed. Also another cardinal sin, putting obstacles and enemies right at the start of the level. Who's gonna dodge that? Nobody! Not the first time! Well, if it's good enough for Action 52, it must be good enough for a supposed 90s shovelware game. Anyway, as a result of that, you have very little time to get your bearings, not that there are many bearings to get in the first place. What are these enemies even meant to be anyway? Crosses? I thought this game was meant to be Christian shovelware, why the hell are we shooting at crosses? Again, once you beat the level, the music just cuts out, thank Thor, and retreated to another cutscene, and for a third time, only one line is of any use to us. And this time around, even that line is a bit cryptic. Beyond me is the garden. Find your friends though, hanging in trees. Now admittedly, up until now, the game has been rather weird, but mostly just kind of crap. In that respect, I must admit it's exactly what I'd expect from a Christian shovelware game from the 90s. This is the point in the game where they start cranking up the bizarro meter a little. We now jump back to the shovelware queens, one of whom has apparently had a very severe emotional reaction to the game. I went to church and my god was good. It doesn't make sense that you want everyone to die. I'll tell you what doesn't make sense, that reasoning. How would anyone come to that conclusion immediately after having played this unholy mess of gameplay? I'm all for games as are, but I think you're reading into it a bit too deeply if you're bursting into tears at this point. After that little episode, one of the girl's dads comes in and reiterates that the game is rubbish, and we move on to the next level. This is a very simple platformer, but with a twist. A very literal twist, since the screen keeps turning round and round, making the entire level rather uncomfortably disorienting. Your objective here is to rescue these people who all look the same, and who are according to the previous cutscenes strung up in trees. Except they are quite clearly crucifixes. Really, weird disembodied dude from the previous level? Trees? I'm agnostic, and even I know the difference between a tree and a crucifix. <coughs> Aside from that, that's pretty much all as regards this level. You rescue people, they spout totally unrelated Bible quotes, some of which repeat, there's no minimap of any kind making it really hard to navigate, and the fact that all the areas look the same doesn't help in the very slightest. Nor does the slowly revolving screen. I think I speak for all of us when I say, what the heck is going on? And once that's over and done with, here we go again with the weird nonsensical FMV cutscenes. This one depicts the dad from earlier praying in the middle of the night in the same place where the girls were. I have several questions. For instance, why is he praying in the middle of the night and why there in particular? Is it because the game's so terrible that he appreciates everything else in his life that much more? 
And more to the point, why the heck are the shovelware queens recording him, presumably without his knowledge? That's ever so slightly creepy and I'm quite sure it's illegal in most jurisdictions too. Anyway, I went back and checked my footage and this cutscene goes on for a full 2 minutes and 10 seconds. 2 minutes and 10 seconds of somebody else's dad praying. Why in the world do we need to see this? What significance is there to it? Why in Thor's name are we watching this girl's dad praying for two entire minutes? And I thought Metal Gear Solid was bad for cutscenes. But the weirdness does not stop there. In fact, it gets about a hundred times worse. I would like to take a moment to state that what follows this is genuinely what happens in the game. No jokes, no lies, the absolute 100% crystal clear serious truth. This is the part of the game which made me want to do an It's Weird video on it in the first place. So I suggest you take a little time to prepare yourself mentally and physically for what you're about to see. The final boss comes completely out of nowhere and is a giant gurning space giraffe wearing pink lipstick that attacks you by shooting eyeballs at you! Oh my word! Why? It was time for Thomas to leave. He had seen everything. I cannot even begin to describe it. Just listen to it. Whatever this is, it's certainly not a sound meant for human ears. It's genuinely quite horrifying. In fact, I'm going to play something else over the top so you guys don't have to listen to it. <sighs> Much better. But seriously, what the ever-loving crap does a space giraffe wearing pink lipstick have to do with anything that's happened over the entire rest of the game? What the hell happened to that Enox Hope place that Mrs. Space Nun talked about? And what's this gurning facial expression that the giraffe is pulling? Is it meant to be anger? It just looks like it's trying to force out a really big poo while fighting you. I was genuinely so weirded out by this boss and frustrated because I kept dying that after a while I just gave up. Seriously, half of all my footage for this game is me trying to beat this boss. Not that I missed much, because when you beat the game you're treated to this. Yep, after all that bullshit it just gives you the end. Nothing more, nothing less. No explanation, no end cutscene, no nothing. What about saving Enoch's hope? What the hell even is Uriel's chasm? Oh well, so much for that. All we did was kill a space giraffe. If I were to put my overall thoughts on this game into words, despite all my complaints, honestly, bad is the wrong word to describe this game. The correct term would be too much. It's trying to have its cake and eat it, it wants to be a piece of art, too hard as a matter of fact. And as a result, whilst it succeeds in that, to your basic Steam users such as I, it's a completely unintelligible mind screw, and aside from that, as a game, it falls down almost entirely. It's about as enjoyable to the lay person as a Jackson Pollock painting, in fact I may even go as far as to compare Dylan Barry to Sander Cohen. So if you're a critic looking for a piece of art, then this is right up your street, but to the average gamer it's a nauseous assault on the senses which very few would have the patience to play through, and by the time you get to the final level it just becomes downright disturbing, so I'm not surprised that Steam reviewers have not exactly given this game a stellar reception. It's not bad, but it's not entertaining, it's just unpleasant and bizarre in all the wrong ways. What gameplay there is is a strange mix of frustrating and bland, and what art there is is morbid and cryptic as hell, and for those reasons I recommend you stay very, very far away from this game. Even if Indie Gala is giving this game away for free, which if I remember rightly is how it came into my possession, do not take them up on it. Even Rail Slave himself has told some people not to play it, albeit for different reasons, but still. And you know what, I think the giraffe and the background music that comes with it may have actually given me a bit of emotional trauma, and honestly I wouldn't be surprised if Mr. Barry considers that a roaring success. I understand there is also a sequel aptly titled Uriel's Chasm 2, and subtitled with a couple of Hebrew letters which I can't read, but I highly doubt I'm ever going to play that after my experiences with this one. Oh well, at least there's a free experimental rock album hidden in the game files. So in short, Uriel's Chasm. It's weird. That is all for this episode. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. Join my Discord server, link below. Leave a comment if you liked it, leave a comment if you didn't like it. Either way, it means a lot to me. Be sure to ring the little bell next to the subscribe button so you know when I've uploaded and I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta!